Hey, everybody. I had trouble finding the link. I'm still new to this, so I didn't know how to get in here as the creator to actually start going live. Who's out there? So excited to do 90 minute JIP. We never get to do this at the studio. I have like one class on the schedule and I teach at the same time as it, so. Yes, Yana, what's going on? Oh my God, how are you? So good. We'll start in just a second here. 14 people, amazing. You guys can hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Jeannie, yes. Oh my God. So good. Allison, amazing. Okay. Let's start in child's pose. Um, so this is going to be a 90 minute journey into power sequence. So we teach Baptiste yoga at Power Yoga Canada. Um, wherever I teach yoga, that's the style of yoga I teach. And originally this flow um, that we teach in 60 minutes, it's a 90 minute sequence, right? So um, obviously to get all those poses into 60 minutes, it can be done if you do it really, really fast, but um, to keep it more, you know, um, evenly paced. It takes about 90 minutes to get all the poses in. So um, just take rest if you need it. There's definitely going to be a little bit more time for hips and stuff at the end when we have the extra time. Um, a little bit more time for fire at the beginning too. Yeah. So on your mat in child's pose to start. Knees wide. Settle back onto your heels. Take first few moments of your practice to let yourself land. Physically landing on your mat, in your child's pose. Starting to bring connection to your breath, your ujjayi breathing through your nose. Nice long fluid breaths in and out. Your breath as an access point here to your physical body as a way to get you or connected to your physical body. Really yoga is just that, it's a way to get present, way to get connected through the poses, through the physical movement, through the physical work. It's a way to keep your mind present as well. In these first few moments, just integrating your mind, your breath, your body, getting them all connected. Together, breathe in. Together, breathe out. Again, a big inhale. And exhale. Three more breaths. Fill, empty, before you press your hands, tops of your feet, inhale up to tabletop, downward facing dog, take your hips back, and land in your first down dog of your practice this morning, yeah, find connection to your mat through your hands and your feet. Really ground through the four corners of the hands and feet, your inner ankles back, outer ankles down, the mounds of your big toe, your pinky toe. Every knuckle on both hands, yeah, not just pushing through your palms, but all the fingers, no space under the knuckles. Breathe in, breathe out. Soften into your joints, elbows and knees, not rigid. Feel out your body in this first down dog. Is there any tightness? Are you feeling strong? Are you feeling open, flexible? Whatever it is, just get clear on that. 
work with what your body's offering you this morning instead of fighting it, instead of trying to force anything that's just not there. Step forward, ragdoll. At the top of your mat, grab your opposite elbows or biceps and then just let the upper body go. Let the crown of your head dangle down. Finding balance in your practice this morning, tension and release, right? So working hard when that's what's happening or when that's what fits and then taking rest whenever you need it as well. Again, softening without judgment, right? If you need to rest, you rest. It's a powerful thing to do when it's the right thing to do. And it's just like getting clear when you're resting or when you're just avoiding sensations, avoiding intensity, telling yourself you can't do something to check in if it's true. Always listen to what your thoughts are telling you. They might try to sabotage your practice. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. So it's coming back to physicality. How is your body feeling? What is your body capable of? What is it offering to you in that moment? Not how it's shown up in the past. Not how you maybe want it to show up in just here and now. Fingertips to your mat. Bring your big toes to touch. Halfway lift. Fold. Extended mountain pose. Reach your fingertips to the ceiling. Samastiti. Hands at heart center. Gaze to your fingers with your eyes open. We'll start with three ohms. Take a breath in. your arms up to the ceiling. Fold forward. Hug your chest to your thighs. Halfway lift. Lengthen your spine. Chaturanga Dandasana. High to low plank. Lower down. You can drop your knees if you need the modification, yeah? Upward facing dog. Chest forward. Press the tops of your feet down. Downward facing dog. Hips back. Take a breath in. Breath out. Inhale, and exhale, full breaths, really root down through the hands and the feet, wake up your core if it's not already there yet, Uddiyana Bandha, core muscles swooping in, up towards your ribs, breathe in, press your heels down. Lift up onto your toes, bend your knees, look forward, step forward, halfway lift, fold. Extended mount, reach to the ceiling, press down into your feet, fold, hug chest to thighs. Halfway lift, Chaturanga Dandasana, high to low plank. Upward facing dog, lift up. Downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. Press down, hands and feet. Pull your belly and press back through the tailbone. Open your eyes. Drishti, another tool, your gaze. Keep it focused. Keep it intentional at one point. Fill, root down, lift onto your toes, bend your knees, look between your hands, drishti, hopper step forward, flat back, eyes at the top of your mat, fold, look to your belly button, hug in, extended mountain, reach up, look past your fingertips, start to go back a little bit, and then fold, look back to your center, your core. 
halfway lift. Eyes at the top of your mat. Chaturanga Dandasana. Keep your eyes there as you flow. So if you look forward, you're crunching the neck. Yeah, look down. Upward facing dog. Look up. On neck. Downward facing dog. Eyes between your feet. Your drishti. It's really the first pillar of this practice is where your attention is going, yeah? Not just physically where you're looking, where you're putting your focus, what you're making important in the room, what you're making important about your practice. The focus on what's working, where you feel strong. Keep your attention out here in the room. Connected. Up onto your toes. Bend your knees, upper step between your hands, flat back, lengthen the spine, fold. Extended mountain, go up and go back, keep reaching, pull the pit of your belly in, and then fold, hug into your legs. Halfway lift, Chaturanga Dandasana. Control, focus, upward facing dog, look up. Downward facing dog, hips back. Take a full breath in. Take a full breath out. Inhale. Exhale. Three breaths. Fill. Empty. Onto your toes. Bend your knees, pause with your lungs empty. Hopper step forward, right away, flat back, lengthen your spine, fold. Extended mount, up and back, Uddiyana Bandha, core pulls in, fold, hug to your legs. Halfway lift, Chaturanga Dandasana, step or shoot back. Upward facing dog, thighs lift up, downward facing dog. Take a breath in and out. Hands and feet press down. Hit up the belly, hugs in. Eyes open. Drishti focused. Lift up onto your toes. Bend your knees. Hug skin to muscle to bone and then hop to the top of your mat. Right away, lengthen the spine. Full. Last one, extended mountain, go up, go back, squeeze in, and then fold, hug to your legs. Lengthen. Chaturanga Dandasana, step or shoot back. Upward facing dog, lift your shin bones off the mat. Downward facing dog. Full breath in. Open your mouth, let it go. <sighs> yeah, do that, full inhale. Just letting go of some tension. <sighs> Three breaths, in and out. Press your hands and feet. Pull your muscles into the bones, starting to build more heat, more fire in your breath, more fire in your muscles. Breathe in, breathe out, lift up onto your toes, bend your knees, hop to the top of your mat, flat back, full. Utkatasana, chair pose. So sit down like you're in a chair, reach the arms up. Finding a neutral pelvis, so tailbone way out, your tailbone scoop down, find somewhere kind of in between there for you, so you take some of the pinching out of your low back if it's there, scoop down, lift your chest up, sit deeper, together breathe, focus your gaze, Top boss here, the fire, another tool, building heat, building intensity, building awareness in your body. Yeah, take another breath, lift your chest, and then fold, chest to thighs. Halfway lift. Chaturanga Dandasana. Move with your breath, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward, warrior one. Reach your fingers up. Square the hips, the right hip draws back, left hip forward, yes, yeah? so they're facing the front of your mat. Fingertips reach up, nice and deep in the lunge. Find your bandhas here, that lock of the core. Squeeze up your pelvic floor and your neck too long, supported here. Tuck the chin, lengthen, breathe in. 
Sink a bit deeper in your front knee. One more, start to go up, start to go back. Chaturanga Dandasana, plant the hands, flow. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Left side, warrior one. Feet, core, hands. Full body awareness. Drop back the left hip bone. Pull in your pelvic floor. That's like Kegel muscles, like that. Muscles you use to stop yourself from going to the bathroom. Yeah, they're in your yoga practice too. Hug them in. Sink deeper, right from the bottom. Support it. Uddiyana Bandha, core. Pull it in nice and tight. Big long neck. Chaturanga Dandasana, flow with your breath. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Five breaths. Focus eyes, focus attention. Pressing down, squeezing in. The heat, building it, not avoiding it. Stoke that inner fire with your ujjayi breath. Lift up onto your toes, bend your knees, we'll flow, yeah? Hop to the top of your mat, flat back, fold. Utkatasana, chair, just one breath. Uttanasana, fold. Halfway lift. Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Right side, warrior one. One breath, use it to flow, to reach. Chaturanga Dandasana, vinyasa here, moving with your breath. Let it propel you in and out. Left side, feet, fingers reach. Chaturanga Dandasana, flow. Upward facing, downward facing dog. Five breaths. Down dog, home base, right? Reset. Find your breath, find your gaze. It's just these tools to keep you focused. Anytime you find yourself distracted, how's your breath? What are you looking at? Where can you bring more engagement, more physical support through your muscles? It's ways to land yourself. Lift up onto your toes, bend your knees, hop or step forward, halfway lift, fold, chair, fold, lengthen, chaturanga dandasana, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, Right side, warrior one, press down, reach. Chaturanga Dandasana, breath, flow. Upward, downward facing dog. Left side, round your feet, reach up, go back. Chaturanga Dandasana, flow it out. Upward, downward facing dog. Five breaths, round. Three more. In. Out. Lift. Bend. Empty. Up. Flat back. Fold. Chair. Fold. Halfway lift. Chaturanga Dandasana. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Right side warrior one. Reach up. Ground into your feet. Chaturanga Dandasana. Move with your breath. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Left side. Uddiyana Bandha. Muscles of your core support. Reach, 
Chaturanga Dandasana, wrap, upward, downward facing dog, reset. Hug in muscles, steady your gaze. Feeling that flow, vinyasa, your breath, guiding you through the practice, not your mind. Lift up onto your toes, bend your knees, pause, hop right away, fill and lengthen, fold and empty. Chair, keep sipping air in, sit as deep as you can, full, hug chest to thighs. Halfway left. Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing. Downward facing dog. Right side, warrior one. Keep breathing in, keep reaching back. Chaturanga Dandasana. You can float your toes if you want to add that in. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Left side. Press. Reach up, Chaturanga Dandasana, moving with breath, fill your lungs, empty out, full breath in, empty, breathe, in, Lift up, bend your knees, upper step, halfway lift, fold, chair, fold, breath moving, you lengthen, flow, in, out, right side, Breath, expand the pose. Chaturanga Dandasana, flow. Move the energy in and out. Left side, last one here, go for it. Reach, lengthen. Chaturanga Dandasana, breathe through it. Inhale, exhale. Take a big breath in. Press down through the hands and feet. Feet together at the back of the mat. Lift your right foot up. Bend your knee. Three-legged dog to start. Do that. So you stack the right hip up over the left. Start to draw the right heel down towards your glute. Three-legged dog is an option, or you can flip your dog. Yeah, the top foot falls behind you. Both feet face the back of your mat, parallel. Lift up your hips and then reach forward with your fingertips on the right hand. Breathe in. Breathe out. Press and reach. Fill up. Empty. One more breath in. Flip over to high plank. Spin your heels to the right, side plank. The left arm goes up. Lift the hips. Those bandhas here, your pelvic floor, your core, your neck, keep everything long, hugging in. And then lift the top leg if that's an option. Yeah, take your fullest expression. If you fall out, just start again. Take a big breath in. Look to your top hand. One more expansive inhale. Chaturanga Dandasana, flow. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Take a full breath in. Full breath out. Right foot up to the ceiling. Step through. Crescent lunge. Breathe in. Spin the same way, leg. Breathe out. Arms up over your head, yeah? So biceps by the ears. Keep a lift in the back heel, not letting it dip down too much, yeah? Keep it lifted high. Inhale. Hands to heart center. Lengthen forward. And then twist. 
Shoulders will tend to roll forward here. You want to draw them back. Yeah, keep shoulder integration. Look up over your right shoulder. Breathe in. Uriana Banda core, squeeze it to twist. Two more, inhale. Exhale, lengthen, twist deeper, warrior two. Sink down into it. Find your deepest stance, yeah? So you're gonna come nice and deep in the front knee. Not crunching shoulders next to your ears, yeah? Find space, let them melt down. Just challenge yourself, right? Deeper, further, longer. It's all relative to your own body. If I say deeper and you're as deep as you can go, then you're there already, right? Just do that work. Be satisfied, be empowered in how your body's showing up for you here. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Press your feet. Squeeze through the inner thighs. One more. Hold it. Flip and reverse, peaceful warrior, reach back, extended side angle. You can have your elbow to your knee, or a block, oh I forgot my block, stay where you are. Your fingertips can come down to a block inside your foot as well. A few more breaths in, and out. Any variation, if you want to bind, do that. Top hand to your low back. You've got the mobility. Your bottom arm can wrap around. Two more breaths. Inhale. Twist the upper body. Top shoulder blade back. Full breath in. Chaturanga Dandasana. Flow it out. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Left foot forward. Oh, no, I lied. Flip dog. Lift your left foot up to the ceiling. Bend your knee, stack your hips. So starting here, three-legged dog is an option. You can stay right here. This is a perfect option for some of you. Yeah, keep opening through the hips as much as you can. Flip dog, other option. Set up the feet parallel, and then lift up through the hips. Reach forward with your fingertips, yeah? And both feet are pressing into your mat equally, not just on one side. Breathe in, breathe out. Gaze past your fingertips, and then engage. Lift higher. Take one more breath in, flip over to high plank, move into your side plank, so heels to the left, right arm goes up, active feet, active fingers, active core, the bandhas, your muscles pulling in, find a lift in the top leg if it's there, three breaths, inhale, exhale, look to your top hand, see where you can go, take one more breath, chaturanga dandasana, flow. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Now lift your left foot up and step it through to crescent lunge. Keep that lift in your back heel. If you need the modification, then you can drop down, right? It can be on a block if that's what feels good. Reach the arms up. Inhale and twist. Right elbow on the left knee. Left shoulder blade draws back, and then activate the back leg. Wake it up, yeah? Breathe in. And twist. Three more. Three big breaths. In. Out. Lift. Twist. Warrior two. Open up. Again, you find your deepest stance. Challenge yourself to go right into it because there might be more work available, right? In a couple breaths, you might find more space. If you hold back, then you don't know what's possible. Trust that you're strong enough. Even deeper in your lunge. Yeah, two breaths. Inhale. Squeeze Uriana Banda. Core muscles strong. Flip and reverse. Extended side angle. Fingertips to a block of the ground. Right arm up, gentle twist, breathe in, breathe out, a couple more, twisting the bottom ribs up towards the ceiling, fill your lungs, 
Chaturanga Dandasana, flow through. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Breathe in. Bend your knees, empty out. Hop to the top of your mat, flat back. Fold. Utkatasana, chair. Hands to heart center. Twist to the right. Left elbow hooks the right knee. Draw the right shoulder blade back. If your left knee is popping forward, yeah, that's common. Just draw the left hip back, square them off. Breathe in. Twist. Lengthen. Twist deeper. Couple more. Big twist. Inhale. Exhale. Come back to center, Utkatasana. Stay in the seat, twist to your left, five breaths. Yeah, shoulder integration. Core, Uddiyana Bandha, muscles pulling into bones. Three breaths, you got it in. Twist deeper. Lengthen your spine, deepen your twist. Take one more breath in and out. Stay for the twist, and then release. Feet as wide as your hips. Fingers to toes forward fold. So you'll scoop up your big toes with your peace fingers, yeah? And then let the upper body go. And shake your head at yes and no. Just letting go of any tension in the neck. You don't have to fold up your head. Rest. What do you need right here? Just recharge for a moment. In most of these moments of rest. Don't waste the time thinking about how hard it is, how hot you are, your heartbeat, those things, like unless they're empowering you, let them go. Come back to rest and release. Breathe in. Gorilla, palms underneath the feet. Allowing yourself both tension and release, yeah? Strength and softness in the practice. You know, for me, the most powerful practice when I balance, not just pushing and forcing, not, you know, making it easy the whole time, but somewhere in between. Totally different every time I hit my mat. Just being okay with that. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Release your feet. Set up for crow, Vakasana. Option here is to take crow on a block. If you're new to this pose, this makes it a lot less, you know, scary. People have a lot of fear of falling out of this pose, it seems. So the pose, the form is hands on the mat, knees on the backs of the triceps, like right up in the armpits, if you can get them that high up. Not out here on the sides, not squeezing in and causing strain on the joints, but on the back of the arms, yeah? So this is where the block can help get you in proper form if you take it a different way. From here, you bend the elbows, make the shelf, and you're already in the pose with your toes on the block. If you have the strength, the mobility, you lift up. One or both feet come up. Breathe in. Breathe out. Three breaths in. Press your hands. Eyes are in front of your fingertips, not looking back between your hands. Take a big breath in. Lift. Chaturanga Dandasana. Step or shoot back. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Come up onto your toes, bend your knees, step to the top of your mat, flat back, fold, sweep all the way up, eagle on your right side, right arm under, right leg over the left. I've got an issue on my left knee, so on this side I take a kickstand just to stabilize it more. If the bind in your arms doesn't feel right, you can do like genie arms, just pressing elbows and hands into each other. Breathe in. Sink a bit deeper in the standing knee. Again. Or strong. Sweep up. Left side, same pose. 
arms, legs, everything hugging in the center line. Core. Breathe. Let's play with going deeper. Inhale. Exhale. Elbows lift up. Sink down. Sweep your arms up. Eagle on the right, again. Same pose, but a new experience of it. It's a different moment. What else can happen here? So be aware if you go through default. Some of you may be doing the practice for one of your first times or your first time. If it's old news for you, like what can you do to make it interesting? Instead of just hanging out in default, breathe in. Go as deep as you actually can. Sweep up. Left side, eagle. Steady eyes. Focus breath. Bend the standing knee deeper. Inhale. Exhale. Another full breath. Squeeze in, stay. Sweep all the way up. Single standing leg raise. So you grab onto, um, I'll turn so you can see. You can grab onto your right knee and open up from here. If you have the balance, if you have the flexibility, you can grab the pinky toe edge of your right foot and extend out from there, yeah? Keeping a nice tall spine, lift up through the crown of the head. Breathe in. Breathe out. Gazing forward will be a little more stable than gazing over the left shoulder. You can do whatever you want to try to do. Yeah, breathe. Inviting instability can actually be fun if you're not judging yourself. Just see what's possible. If you fall out, you just start over. We have judgment. Take a breath in. Bring your foot back to center. Arms up and then press the heel forward. Lift your toes as high as you can. You're not leaning back with it. Yeah, keep your shoulders over your hips. Press the heel to the front of the room and then airplane. You fly back. Keep your bottom foot facing 12 o'clock. Draw the shoulders back. Roll them onto your back. Lift up through the collarbones. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lengthen. Stay. One more. Go higher. Hands to your heart center. Half moon. So another great place for a block here. You can lift the ground a bit closer to your fingers with the block. Right fingertips reach up. You can gaze up. That might take you out of your balance. That's okay. Start again. Spark the fingers and toes. Find your fullest expression. Breathe in. Breathe out. Keep lifting. Keep expanding. Like take up as much space in your room as you can. Breathe. And release feet together. Halfway left, fold, sweep all the way up, single standing leg raise on the other side, so you can grab the knee or the foot and expand, open to the side, steady gaze, really strong core, your Uriana Banda muscles, navel, spine, and then up to the ribs, hook it in. Engage it, take a breath in. Exhale your foot back to center, arms up, heel forward, really find lift, get into your core there, breathe in, and then fly back, airplane pose. Shoulders on your back. Micro bend in that bottom knee, keep the leg working, keep the hips squared to the floor. Back toes turned down towards the floor, yeah? Take a breath in, take a breath out. Lengthen and lift even more. Hands to heart center. Half moon pose. With or without a block. Expand your body in the pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lift higher. Stay your core working. Really fill up the space on your mat. Take a big breath in. And release feet together. Halfway lift, fold, sweep all the way up, dancer on your right side. So you'll grab the inside of your right foot, it's the big toe side, yeah? Kick back into your hands. So your elbow's facing out to the right side of the room, 
thumb facing up towards the ceiling yet. You might be way back here. This is perfectly fine. Like this can be dancer's pose. Just trying to play with balance. Don't lock out the bottom knee. Kick back. Go as high as you can. Three more breaths in and out. Left shoulder back, right hip bone forward, square to the front of your mat. Take a big breath, kick and lift, and release. Dance around your left side. Grab the inside of the left foot. Kick back and lift. Breathe in. Breathe out. Your fullest expression, your leg doing the work, your arm just holding tension. Kick into your hand, lift up through your chest. A couple more, inhale. Exhale, big, big lift, and then release. Do the other side again. Dancer's pose. Kick back into your hands. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lift. Find your biggest possible variation in dancer. Take a full, full inhale. And then release, switch sides. Kick. Find your body's biggest possible pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Keep playing with what's possible. Don't get stuck. Don't be stagnant. Your last big breath. And then release. You might fall out. That's okay. Move into tree on the right side. Yeah, so tree. Options with your foot, again, there's a kickstand. There's always an option to keep the toes on the ground. It's more stable, right? If you have any issues with balance or you feel like you just need that today, go for it. Inner calf, not pressing the side of the knee, bad for the joint, right? Above the knee, if that's available to you, you can go there. From here, hands start at the heart center. Press down into your bottom foot. And then pull that energy into center line, yeah? Your foot and your leg, your core, your shoulders. Lift up through your fingers, through your chest. Fully express out in your pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Like any variation, whatever you want to do with your arms, with your legs, just being in possibility, not doing default poses. Take a big full inhale and release. Switch sides. One side might be different than the other as far as the leg variation. You just go with what your body offers to you. It's great if you can get it up into your inner thigh, good, and try. If it doesn't go there one day, don't fixate on it. Don't waste time. Next breath, next opportunity to land. Breathe. And keep growing your tree, your fullest expression. You push down, you pull in, you lift up, and take it on. Big breath, and release. Sweep your arms up to the ceiling. Fold forward. Halfway lift. Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward. Warrior one. Open to warrior two. Trikonasana pose. Straighten the front leg. Come forward with your right, uh, right fingertips and then bring them down. So a block is recommended for a lot of people here, okay? So the block will just keep you lifted up out of your side body. You might be able to touch the floor, right? It's not about being able to touch the floor. It's how does this area, the right side of your body, feel if you're doing that, right? I know for me, I can touch it easily, but I feel all crunched up there. The block, space, yeah, openness across the side of the body. Breathe in. Draw the shoulder back. If you don't have any kind of a prop, it can be your palm on the front of your shin, yeah? You're not grabbing your shin for dear life. You're pressing and grounding through the palm just again to find that lift up out of the waist. Two more. In. And out. Reach the top fingers. Draw back the top shoulder. Pull yourself all the way up to stand. Wide leg fold. So your feet are going to face the left side of your mat. Feet parallel. Yeah, so parallel to the ends of the mat. Hands on your hips, lift your chest up, and then lead with your chest as you come down through the fold. Hands on the ground. Any variation, you can swoop up your toes, you can grab your ankles just to help 
Keep in your fold. Guide yourself wherever you need to go. Keep the legs strong, yeah? So micro bend in the knees. They're not locked. They're not hyperextended. And then shift your hips forward a couple of inches towards your toes. Just feel your legs working. Shake your head out, yeah, simple. Breathe in. Breathe out. Just grounding here through your feet. Let your body lands. Inhale. Exhale. Come all the way up to stand. Hands to your hips with a flat back. Turn your toes forward. You'll step your back foot in about halfway. Yeah? Not too close. You don't want to be way back here with the heel off the ground. Get it in close enough that the heel can land on the floor. Square your hips. And then we'll take reverse namaste. So here, I'll show you this. Bring your fingertips touching with them pointing down towards the floor. And then from here, it's a lot easier, I find, to turn them up into reverse namaste. You might be way down here. If you can get up higher, bring the palms together. And then we'll do this reverse namaste front facing forward fold, fold over the right leg. Press into both heels equally, find that equal weight distribution and then draw back through your right hip bone, square the hips. Let the upper body go. Breathe in. Press your feet. If you don't have the reverse namaste, fingers can be on the ground or blocks, whatever you need to stabilize. Do a couple more breaths. Also an option to take wider feet. Imagine you're chanting on train tracks, not on a tightrope with the feet, yeah? Breathe in. Let the crown of the head go. Fingertips down to your mat. Lengthen your spine. Twisted triangle. So another good place to have a prop, yeah, if you need it. You're going to bring the left hand to the right foot. Right hand either on the low back or right hand reaching up to the ceiling. Draw your right hip bone back, keep the hips square. Twist the upper body. Breathe in. Press your feet. Inhale. Twist. Long spine, tailbone back, crown of your head forward. Take one more reach up. Chaturanga Dandasana, flow. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, left foot forward, warrior one, reach up, open to warrior two, flip, triangle pose, come forward, reach forward and then come down. Again, block option, shin bone option. You should be able to find some kind of a prop at home. It's more ideal to have your hand on the ground, right? Three points of contact with the floor. That's the triangle. Draw back through your top shoulder blade. Breathe in. Breathe out. Be twisting here. Lengthen from your bottom hand up to your top fingers, across your chest. Breathe in. Twist further. Look to your top hand. Come all the way up. Hands interlaced at the low back. Lift up through your chest. Fold. Take your fold. I think my dog's having a nightmare somewhere. I'm going to go wake him up. You just do your fold. Mr. B. What's up? Okay. Come on. He's fine, everybody. I just don't want people to think there's like a wandering dog. He's not even locked up. He's doing this himself. So we're doing um, the forward fold with a bind. Yeah. Just again, keep pressing through the outer edges of the feet. Shift your hips forward. The fist pressing up towards the ceiling, up and over your head as far as you can go. Let go of your crown of your head, just let it dangle down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Press your feet. Lift through your inner thigh muscles. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Come all the way up to stand. Turn your toes forward. Move into the reverse namaste again. So fingertips together behind your bum and then flip them up. Palms connect if they can. Fold over your left leg. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale. 
inhale. Exhale. Press the heels. Come back through your left hip bone. Take a breath in. Empty it out. Hands down to your mat. Up to a flat back. Lengthen. Twisted triangle. Again, use a block here. It can be anywhere around the foot. Inside, outside, in front of. Whatever gives you the stability to lengthen, yeah? So not kind of having a rounded spine. You want that nice long spine. Draw back through the top shoulder blade. Breath in. Twist. Lengthen. Go even deeper if you can. Take one more big reach up. Chaturanga Dandasana. Flow it out. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Big breath in. Round down into your mat. Come forward to high plank. Nice and slow for the count of five. We'll lower down for five, four, three. Elbows tight to one. Lower all the way. We'll move into locust pose. Yeah. So arms reach back beside your body. Shoulder blades back and then lift yourself up. Yeah. Chest, arms, and legs. Keep your chin at center. You're looking just to the top of your mat. Again, that bundle in your neck, lengthening the back of the neck. Gently tuck the chin. Breathe in. Breathe out, lift up everything, even higher, and then hold, squeeze to bones, take one more breath, and release, come all the way down. Sway the hips from side to side. Big breath in, big breath out. Chin back to center, bound locust pose, interlace your hands. Press your knuckles to the back of your mat and then lift up everything. So just gonna give you a bit more lift in the chest from um, the regular locust pose maybe. Yeah, find that, connect, knuckles press back and then lift up through the chest. Breathe in, breathe out. Two more, big squeeze, hug it and lift as high as you can. One more breath, gently come all the way down, sway your hips, other ear to the mat. Bend your knees. We'll take floor bow. Grab to the outside of your ankles, yeah? So the pinky toe, edge of your ankles. If you can't get both feet, um, half floor bow is an option, yeah? So option to go up here, this is a full floor bow. If you can't get both feet, then you straighten one leg and put your forearm out in front of you. So on the right side here, you'd have your right foot, left forearm on the ground out in front of you. Press into your forearm and then kick into your hand. It's gonna give you a similar stretch just on one side. Full expression, you're really keeping the knees hugging towards each other. Don't splay your knees way out. You want to keep them hugging in. Shin bones, kick back. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. One more big lift up. And then release all the way down. Windshield wipe your legs from side to side. And we'll do one more floor bowl together. Grab your ankles, chin to center. Kick back into your hands. The work in this pose is in your legs. Yeah, think of a bow, right? The bow, the string is just holding tension. Your arms, your work is in the legs, the wood. Kick, really strong. Find more lift through the chest, more length through the neck. Take a big inhale and release. Lower all the way down right away. Up dog, hands by your low ribs, upward facing dog. You lift, hold that for an exhale. One more inhale, chest forward, lift the thighs, downward facing dog. Walk about halfway up your mat, come onto your knees. We'll do camel pose. This pose, um, it can be a little hard on some people's knees. If you have issues, roll up the mat, just do like a triple thickness there. I'm on a carpet here, so I'm actually okay. I normally would need to. Hands at the low back. Imagine your hands are in your back pockets and then lift up through the chest. So the simplest variation, just right here, right? If you want to keep going up and back, you can keep reaching up with the chest, drawing back through the shoulders. Think of your pelvis staying over your hip so you're not coming back behind the hip, or the knees, sorry, pelvis over your knees. Option if you have that mobility is to reach for your ankles. You keep the chest lifting, keep the hips over the knees. Breathe in, breathe out. 
out. Let your head fall back. As long as you can still breathe comfortably. Three more. In. Out. Lift the chest. Gently press the hips forward. Come up slowly with control. We'll come down onto our back. You can just cross your ankles here and sit down onto your bum. Bring your feet out in front. Set up for bridge. So on your back, you're just going to be able to graze the heels with your fingertips. Bring your feet in close enough to your bum. Press down the backs of the triceps so you can get your shoulders integrated and then lift the hips. You can take robot arms like this, like pressing the triceps to keep a lift through the chest and the shoulder integration. If you want to interlace the hands under your back, that's an option as well. Your hips are lifting in bridge, but so is your chest. Yeah, imagine your chest lifting up towards the back of your mat, like really find fullest expression in your back bend. Glutes working a little bit, core working a lot to stabilize the back. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. One more big lift up and release. Come all the way down. Knees from side to side. Set up for a wheel. Hands beside your ears. Fingertips pointing towards your shoulders. If you think you don't have a wheel, just put your hands here and press the floor. Make sure that you're right. You might be wrong. You never know. Half wheel is an option, right? You just come up to the crown of your head. This is where you can kind of start from, building strength in the arms and upper body. If you've got full wheel, go for it. Lift all the way up. Press the hands and the feet. Keep engaged through the core. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lift. Squeeze. Take a big full inhale. Gently come down. Tuck the chin. Breathe in. Breathe out. Go back up, hands by your ears, lift your hips. It's six wheels in the full journey in the power sequence, so just do all six. Do what you can do, but keep trying, yeah? Don't give up after one or two. If you check out after a couple, like, you can always come back and join us later on. Breathe in, breathe out, full expression, and gently come down. Take one inhale, take one exhale. You go back up. All of those tools, breath, gaze, muscles engaged and working, the fire, the breath, keeping you here, keeping you strong. Take two more. Inhale, exhale, last breath in, come down, staying in that work. Inhale, exhale, number four, go back up, stay in it. Something happens after four, five, six, like all of a sudden your body jumps back in. New power that you didn't know you had is possible. Just waiting. Take a big full inhale. Full exhale. Last one in this pose here. Lift yourself up and then come down. Quickly two more. Breathe in. Breathe out. Second last wheel. Take it like it's your only one. Press. Pull muscles to bones and lift your full expression up towards the ceiling. Breathe in. Breathe out. Louder breath. Bigger lift. Fill up. Press into your hands and feet. Last breath in this one. And then gently bring yourself down. Take three breaths here. Give yourself a little pep talk about how amazing this last wheel is going to be. Yeah, if you haven't done any, then just try and see what you can do. Bridge has been an option, right? Maybe I should have said that. I forgot. <laughs> do bridge, do wheel. Put a block under your back. Whatever you need. Go up for one more back bend. Five breaths together. Inhale. Exhale. For four. Press into your mat and feel your muscles squeezing the bones to support you for three. For two, one more full breath. Use the exhale, gently, gently come down. Supta, Bada, Konasana. Soles of the feet together, knees wide. Take your right hand onto your belly, your left hand onto your heart. Breathe.
Maybe then. Maybe now. Fill your lungs up. Just land here. Feel your heartbeat. Slow it down. Sense of ease. Feeling the release. Breathe in. Happy baby. Grab the outsides of your feet. Soles of your feet face the ceiling. And then pull your knees down towards your armpits, not towards the floor. And just gently sway from side to side. If you stay in stillness, this is called bed bug. This is dead bug pose. Happy baby, you just rock from side to side and massage your little back. Same pose, whatever you need. Press your feet up towards the ceiling. Flex your feet, toes down towards your chest. Hands can come underneath your low back here. This is gonna be more stable. If you really want like extra, extra, extra fire and your back feels strong, arms can be extended out beside your body again. Take a breath in, wake up the legs, lower your feet down a third. Breathe in, lower down a third. Your core working here, yeah? Squeeze it in. One inch off the mat, look at the toes. Point your toes forward and then flutter kick here. Flutter kick your feet for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Belly strong, squeezing in. 3, 2, 1. Feet go up. Take your toes touching and then make your heels nice and wide. So an internal thigh rotation, internal leg rotation. Breathe in. Lower down a third. Heels as wide as they'll go. Big toes touching. Down another third. Take a breath in. Core. Uriana Banda. Hug it in. Lower one inch off the mat. Little circles clockwise here for five, four, three, two, one. Other direction. Counterclockwise. Five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly lift the legs up. Last one. Rotation reverses here. So heels touching. Toes open wide. Breathe in. Lower down a third. Inhale. Another third, keep the heels connected, press into each other, lower one and chop them out. Look at your toes, no movement here, yeah? Just toes wide, heels pressing into each other, heels pressing to the top of your mat, take a breath in, hold for the breath out, big inhale, hug your knees into your chest, nicely done. Make some little circles with your knees, each direction. Feet back up to the ceiling, yeah? Hands behind your head this time. Elbows wide like you're getting ready to do crunches. Yeah, lift, do one crunch, do that. Lift your shoulders off the mat, ribs to your hips. So activate the core muscles, breathe in. Scissor legs, right heel one inch off the mat and alternate for 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Elbows wide, ribs to hips, keep that lift up through the shoulders, two, and one. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, and one, knees into your chest. Bicycle twist, yeah, hands behind the head. So alternating opposite elbow to opposite leg. For one, two, three, keep your knees stacked over your hips. Don't bring your knees too close to your chest. Pressing your heels like they're pressing through mud. Opposite shoulder lifting up off the mat as you twist. Do another 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Hug your knees into your chest. Take a big breath in. Open your mouth. Let it go. <sighs> Breathe in. Let go of the ab drama. It was just a little bit. Feel that tapas in your core. Grab the backs of your knees. Rock up and down your mat a couple times. 
and then come up to an avasana boat pose. So boat pose balancing on the tailbone. There's so many options here. Boat pose can be heels on the ground. Like this can even be boat pose and just to focus on lifting up through the chest. Yeah, this is an option. Option to grab the backs of the knees. Right, option to straighten legs, straighten arms, grab toes. Whatever you're working on, any variation, take on your boat pose. Yeah, lift up through your chest. Any variation, chest lifts, shoulders draw back. Uddiyana Bandha, your core is what is stabilizing this whole pose right here. Take three more breaths in and out. Chest lifting, core fired up. Take a big breath in and release. Rock and roll back. Make your way into downward facing dog. Just been getting closer and closer to this bookshelf. Fix that. And then we'll set up for a half pigeon here on the right side, yeah? So bring your right shin parallel to the top of your mat. Like I was talking about yesterday in the deep flow, it's a nice place to put um, something under your hip, yeah? So a block, a rolled up towel, just something to prevent the, um, the right hip from dumping down onto the ground. You want to keep it lifted up in line with the left. Half pigeon can be on forearms, half pigeon can be up on your palms. If you have a block, it can be under your chest if you need that. Just find support, yeah? Settle into it. Breathe here. The end of the practice is much more restorative poses, is not? We've done the fiery part now. There can still be plenty of um, mental distraction that can happen at the end of this practice, right? Your mind might start to wander as you come into more still poses. Really, yoga is an opportunity to rewire your brain, right? If your default is wandering in thought, your default is the story of being scatterbrained, unfocused, easily distracted. Tell yourself that story all the time and you just create more evidence that it's true, then that'll be what you experience. Every time in your yoga practice that you center your thoughts, that you bring yourself back from distraction, like you're creating a new connection in your mind. Strengthening your ability to focus and stay present. Yoga practice such an amazing opportunity just to have like an hour, 90 minutes, whatever it is, to focus on keeping your thoughts here. Moving meditation. Breathe in. Breathe out. Few more breaths. Really settle into your stretch, deepen it if there's room. Breathe in. Breathe out. Feeling a sense of rest and release. One more inhale. And exhale. Sweep your back leg around in front of you. Seated single leg extension. So the left foot will be just off from center, like 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Your right foot to your inner thigh, like tree pose, imagine, yeah? And then you're gonna square your chest over the left leg, fold over the left leg. Find length in the spine, tuck the chin a little bit. So you're not looking at your toes and putting crunching up in the back of the neck. Feel that space in the neck, tuck, lengthen. In, out, keep going a bit deeper with every exhale, one more, we'll switch sides, half pigeon on the left, um, you can flow through or you can just switch your legs, yeah? Sweep the right leg back. Set yourself up in the pose. 
again, if you have a new injury, then you just modify that, right? Make, bring your heel closer towards your groin will help. Putting a more firm support underneath your hip. If there's an injury on the knee, that'll help. Settle down into the pose and breathe. Stability is take control of your nervous system in your yoga practice, right? You agitate yourself on purpose and then you purposely calm yourself down. Yogis for thousands of years have known the power of this presence, mindfulness, but it's really now science, neuroplasticity all showing it to be true. Can rewire your brain, you can change disempowering thought processes, limiting beliefs. You just have to start being aware of how often you get caught up. Moments of distraction and moments of disempowerment, it's about choosing something else. It's not simple, it's simple work, it's just ongoing. Something that disempowers you, that's been guiding you through your life, and you're aware that it's there, you can start to shift it. Yeah, like step one is just staying present for your meditation pose. Tiny steps in the right direction make big change. One thought at a time. Breathe in, breathe out. Seated single leg extension, bring the back leg forward. Move any props that are there. So your right foot is at one or two o'clock, left foot to your inner thigh, and you'll fold over the right leg. You lengthen the neck, the spine. Breathe in, a little bit deeper, full breaths, inhale, exhale, again, in, last breath. Love to sit. Set up for frog pose. This is a pose that can be very polarizing, right? It's definitely, if you have tight hips, it's, it can be a challenging pose. This is where blocks or props can come in handy. If you have a bolster, if you have a rolled up blanket, anything to support yourself. Um, also, again, if you need padding under the knees, this can be folding up the ends of your mat so your knees aren't on a single thickness of mat. If you've got carpet or padding underneath, you might not need to. Again, option here. So the knees as wide as they can go, and then you're putting a 90 degree bend. So your hips in line with your knees. You don't want to come too far forward or back, right? 90 degree bend at the knee, 90 degree bend at the ankle. So flexing the feet to the sides of your mat, ends of your mat, I should say. And then options here. This can be frog. You can be in frog up on your palms and just feel like that stretch, right? It can be with a block under your pelvic, bowl, like supporting your pelvic bone or your hip bone. It can be a block underneath your sternum, your chest, supporting from there. Yeah? Some of you might not need any support. You just come all the way down to the chest or the forehead. If you're down on the ground, practice the arms, bend the elbows, palms flat. And again, the possibility that with every exhale, there's space to maybe go a little tiny bit deeper. You never know. Be in the practice of staying, yeah? Staying through the discomfort, staying through the sensations. Pain and discomfort are very different and getting clear on that, right? You never want to be in pain in your yoga practice. There shouldn't be pinching or that like kind of electric pain shooting through you. It's different than discomfort. You run from discomfort. It's just waiting for you when you stop running. If you face it, if you go through it, right? Less power on the other side. It has less power over you, I should say. Neuroplasticity, just rewiring the brain, 
making the connections that empower you stronger and taking power away from the ones that disempower you. One breath, one thought at a time. Switch your other ear down with a few more breaths. Breathe in. Breathe out. Gently make your way out of the pose. Don't rush that. Let your hips feel it. Go upside down next. So you can come onto your back, work in the Brita Karani waterfall. You can take a shoulder stance, I'll demo those for you. And then option is again, of course, a headstand if you want to. So waterfall, you put the block underneath your back. If you have no props, it can just be both hands supporting your tailbone. This is waterfall. Shoulder stand, you're gonna take, you're gonna, you're gonna take your hands at your low back, lift your hips up. So supporting the low back, your feet lifting. Trying to stack ankles over hips, over shoulders as best you can. Of course, option for a headstand. If you want to go into a headstand with me, do that. I'll do a workshop video soon for headstand. I feel like people are interested in that. So keep tuned in for that. Just going upside down, however you get there, right? Getting your hips over your heart, over your head which is happening even in the waterfall. Sleep breathing. In and out. Breath in, empty. You're in a headstand option to come down and move into clown and death man options here because they're nice counterbalance, yeah, nice counter poses for your neck after a headstand. So um, if you're in waterfall, stay where you are. If you're in shoulder stand, you can move into plow with us. So feet fall behind the head. They might not touch the ground. If they do start to push the heels back to really lengthen through the legs. Press the back of your skull down into your mat. Really get the neck working here, active. Option for deaf man's pulls, knees beside the ears. In, breathe out, again, and slowly come back onto your mat, roll out. We'll set up for reverse tabletop here. So option in reverse tabletop, you're going to come up, bring your hands underneath your shoulders. You can do this, a reverse tabletop will be with your feet underneath your knees, so you're gonna lift up. Yeah, something like that. Reverse plank is an option as well, so that's with the feet straight, legs straight, I should say, feet pointed, yeah, breathe in. Shoulders integrate, little tiny bend in both elbows. Inhale, exhale, lift the chest, lift the hips, take a big breath in, and gently come down. Set up for fish pose, fingertips underneath, Top, so your bum cheeks there, come down onto the forearms, lift through the chest, your head.
and fall back. Full expression in fish pose, you can bring the crown of the head to the ground. And then its arms and legs extend up from the top corner of your mat, in the room, I should say. Breathe in, breathe out. Three more. Breathe in, and then gently come down. Move into a seated forward fold. Crown of your head towards your toes. Sit bones, tailbone back. Find that space in your spine. Inhale. Pull yourself a bit deeper. Keep a breath here. Empty it out. Release. Come down onto your back. Extend your left leg long. Pull your right knee into your chest. Supine twist. Draw the right knee across the body. More important to keep your shoulders on the ground than to get your right knee all the way over to the floor, yeah? Keep the left leg extended long. You can use your left hand here to guide the other thigh through the twist. Breathe in. Breathe out. Again. Lengthen, deepen. Come back through center. Center your hips, draw the left knee into your chest. And then draw it across the body for supine twist. You can gaze over the left shoulder here. Breathe. Deepen. A couple more. Inhale. Exhale. One more big breath. Find that stretch. Bring your knees back to center. Give yourself a squeeze. Supta Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together, right hand on the belly, left hand on your heart. Just a few breaths to let yourself land. Final pose of our practice, Shavasana. It's still a pose, yeah, corpse pose. Really, the work is just mental. It's resisting the urge to fidget physically, but also really um, being an observation of where your thoughts are to Slot by thought, rewiring your brain, helping yourself stay present, letting go of any distractions that try to take you out from the experience of deep rest. Breathe in. Breathe out. Hug your knees into your chest. One last squeeze in and release. Shavasana. Take rest. Close your eyes. Just allow your body and your mind to land. Anytime you catch yourself distracted, congratulate yourself. It's not a negative, it's not a bad thing. Your awareness is being expanded. If there's an awareness around something you want to shift, then you'll have a lot better chance of shifting it. Cultivate stillness. Physically and mentally.
take a big breath in. Open your mouth, let it out. Arms up over your head, take a stretch. Roll onto your right side, fetal position. Up to a seated position. It's taking your time, no rush. Keep your eyes closed. Sit up tall. Thumbs together at your heart center. We'll finish the practice with three ohms. Breathe in. Uh everybody so good um stay in the chat if you're out there with me and let me know um, what you want me to do tomorrow so I was thinking maybe a little bit shorter practice we've got 90 we've got 75 we've got deep flow fiery like what are you looking for um, I'm gonna keep posting daily as much as I can because I want to keep flowing and I just want to keep connecting with you guys as much as possible so um, I don't know what's up with this dog of mine man if you guys know my dog he is being very out of character by being calm and sleeping in the other room <laughs> Amazing. So good, guys. Awesome. Magdalena, yes. In Poland, so good. Awesome. What are you guys looking for tomorrow? Anybody still out there? You tell me and I'll do it. So good. Thank you for joining me, guys. Keep an eye out. There's lots more coming to my channel. I'm going to be sharing about um, kind of gut health, food and mood, how your um, what you're eating is really going to be affecting how your mind and your brain is functioning during these kind of stressful times. So, Allison, yes, so good. Lisa, what's well, amazing? Thank you for joining me, guys. So good. Yeah, more to come. Stay tuned and uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, please. Yeah, awesome. Have a rest, good rest of your day.